In this video, we will be treating experimental techniques one, the basics of experimental techniques in IGCIC, measuring equipment. Now, let's start with this. Name appropriate apparatus for the measurement of time, temperature, mass, and volume, including burettes, pipettes, and measuring cylinders. Once more, name appropriate apparatus for the measurement of time, temperature, mass, and volume, including burettes, pipettes, and measuring cylinders. Quite a right. You know that in a chemical laboratory, a chemical science laboratory, there are some basic um, laboratory equipment that are used. Learners, it is obligatory for you to know the basic, the basic um, uh, uh, equipment in the the basic equipment used for measuring in uh, a chemical laboratory. So we will be starting with time. Time is a very, is an important factor that is used in the measurement of uh, rate of chemical reaction in the laboratory. The speed at which, the, uh, the speed at which a chemical reaction takes place, a factor that is very, very important there is time. And uh, time can be measured using a stopwatch. Time can be measured using a stopwatch or a stop clock, which are usually accurate to one or two decimal places. You know, the units of time are normally uh, seconds uh, or minutes. But in some cases, like uh, in a slow reaction, like in the process of roasting, uh, we can take one, uh, we can use a minutes. There are two types of equipment in this case. We have, we have our uh, stopwatch. This is the stopwatch. And this is also the stop clock. You can either be given this. So learners, very important to know them. Then the second um, a factor that is used in, in the measurement, especially for energy changes or enthalpy changes uh, in the laboratory, is uh, temperature. The measurement of temperature we can use, the equipment used in the measurement of temperature is the thermometer. There are two types of thermometer. The manual one and the, the digital thermometer. Even though the digital thermometer, this is the digital thermometer, it is more accurate, it's more accurate than this one. This one, you read by the mercury level. You read the mercury level in this thermometer here. As we go, I will show you how to read the mercury level in a thermometer. Because in your exams, you could be given different thermometers to read, especially these. You could be given different thermometers to read the different temperatures there. And you are expected to read them very well. So reading the thermometer is very, very important. The mercury level, you need to know how to read the mercury level. As we proceed, I will show you in, our, in the next page how you can read this. But remember, the units of temperature are degree Celsius. 
the units for temperature are degree Celsius. It takes us to the next uh, factor, which is mass. The next factor is mass. Mass is a factor, this is a factor, is a measurement of weight. You can use to, to measure the weight of something. You, especially in the laboratory, you can measure the mass. You can use, you can measure the mass of a particular substance that you want to use in the laboratory for uh, a reaction. The mass of maybe salt, the mass of uh, any other, any anything you may want to use in the lab for uh, any type of uh, uh, investigation. So mass is measured using a digital balance. This is the digital balance that is used for the measurement of uh, uh, for the measurement of uh, mass, and it's, it's about two, two decimal places. Even though the standard unit of mass is uh, kilograms, but in our chemistry uh, laboratory, what is required or what is usually used is grams. Remember, in the conversion, one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. It also takes us now to measurement of volumes. There are two types of uh, volumes. Volumes for liquids and volume for gases. In your exams, you could be given, you, you, an experiment could be uh, described to you, and you are asked, especially alternative to uh, practicals in your exams, a practical exam, alternative to practical, mostly descriptive. You could be asked or you could be given a description of a particular experiment or a particular investigation. And the, and the question that follow could be, what apparatus was used for this? What apparatus was used for the measurement of volume? What apparatus was used for the measurement of temperature? What apparatus was used for the measurement of mass? In this case, there are many, uh, many of these equipment that are used for the measurement of uh, volume of liquids. We have the measuring cylinder, we have the um, uh, pipettes, and we have the burettes. We also have beakers. In this case, it all depends on the accuracy. It all depends on the accuracy. For approximate volumes, where accuracy is not important, when you want a reaction or you want to carry out the, the investigation very fast, where accuracy is not very, very important, you can use a measuring cylinder. It gives you an approximate amount and you go faster. So where accuracy is not important, use a measuring cylinder. There are many there are me measuring cylinders are in different scales. We have for 25 cm cube, we have for 50 cm cube, we have for 100 cm cube, and we also have for 250, if you write to 400, we have the measuring cylinders. But where accuracy is very, very important, where you need to have an accurate volume, especially when it has to do with titration, you need a pipettes and you also need burettes. Pipettes are graduated into, uh, they are 10 cm cube, they are also 25 cm cube. Burettes, we also have for, uh, from, uh, we have from 0 to 50 cm cube for burettes. So this is an example. Here we have, uh, this, these are good examples of measuring cylinders. Where measuring cylinders where accuracy is not very very important but where accuracy is very very important an accurate value is required this is we now use this one we can now use um we, we now use the pipettes and we can also use the the burettes especially burettes are uh, pipettes are very very important they are important in measuring 
uh, let me say a certain uh, in uh, titration. Let me say measuring maybe a, an exact volume of uh, let me say of acid. Let me say 25 cm cube, or an exact volume of uh, an alkali or a base. Uh, let me say sodium hydroxide, uh, 25 cm cube, into a conical flask. Then, then the titram that we put into the uh, that we put into the burette. The burette run from zero to fifty cm cube. This is the burette. I mean, uh, this is the burette, and these are the cylinders. Uh, measuring cylinders, we can use measuring, uh, measuring maybe uh, uh, for quick measurement. Maybe distilled water, uh, distilled water, or any other measurement we want to do. But in this case, in the case of A, which is the measuring cylinder. Accuracy is not required. It takes all to measurement of volume. Um, um, there are also um, also um, equipment that are used for the measurement of uh, volume. We have the volumetric flask. The volumetric flask again is also used as a, a standard. is used as a standard for the preparation of standard solutions. is is one hundred is one thousand um, a cm cube, which is equivalent to uh, uh, one dm cube or one a liter. This is 1000 cm cube, which is equivalent to one dm cube or one liter. This is a conical flask and this is a beaker. All these are also used for the measurement of volume. But when it comes to accuracy, we, we talked of the the pipettes and uh, the burettes. We move to measurement of gases. The measurement of gases. Well, in a chemical reaction where we need to determine uh, the amount of gas that is being produced. Let's say for the decomposition of marble chips, when a marble chip that is calcium carbonate reacts with uh, hydrochloric acid. We need to know how much of the carbon dioxide that is being released. We need to use a particular equipment for the measurement of the gas. And that equipment is a gas syringe. This is a gas syringe. This is a gas syringe. It is attached. The gas syringe is attached and put into the cork. The gas that is being released from the conical flux flows into it. Now, how do you read it? The gas syringe is graduated. You can see it here it is graduated. It is graduated. Now, as the gas enters into the gas syringe, it pushes it and you see the level of the gas. So you can read it directly from there. Now, another um, equipment that can be used for the measurement of a gas in the laboratory is... Uh, an inverted graduated cylinder. We can use the same graduated cylinder we used up here. This is the same graduated cylinder we used here. This same graduated cylinder we used up here, which is this one. We can use it. This is this one here. We can use it and invert it and connect from the reaction uh, um, beaker into it. For example, here you see this one here. We connect it here, and then the gas, where we invert it and put it into a beaker, the gas that is being produced is red up here. The more the gas, the gas pushes the, um, the, the, the volume of water in the inverted, um, um, in the inverted graduated cylinder down. So this is an example of a graduated cylinder, which is inverted, an inverted graduated cylinder. This is it here. It can be used in the measurement of gas when inverted. Now, we can summarily, um, uh, summarizingly say that the laboratory equipment used for, the, uh, for measurement are one, we have the stopwatch or a stop clock that is used for the measurement of time. We have a, a thermometer that is used for the measurement of temperature. We have a digital balance. 
that is used for the measurement of mass, for the measurement of volume, both volume of gases and the liquid, we have beaker, we have burette for accuracy, we have pipette for accuracy, we have measuring cylinder, and we have the gas syringe for the measurement of gas. Now, it drives us to uh, the measurement of uh, measurements that are done in quantitative analysis. Quantitative analysis. Volume measurement in quantitative analysis. I am talking of titration. Titration, this is one of the method we use to measure the accurate volume that is used in that that will the accurate volume of the titran that will react with the that will, will react with the analyte. So in this case, this is a clear structure. Uh, this is a, a clear diagram of uh, a diagram of what happens during titration. A, during a titration experiment, you will need one a measure a measuring cylinder. You will need a conical flask that will that. Uh, especially for acid-based titration, you will need a conical flask to put in your acid there and uh, the indicator. You will need a white, um, um, uh, a white paper or white tile, a white tile or a white paper. You will also need a, a, a measuring cylinder to measure uh, 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 for for fast measurement of volume of uh, liquids. You will need, you will need um, a buret stand. You will need a buret stand. You will also need a buret to put in the sodium hydroxide in it. You will need a pipette to measure the acid uh, in it accurate volume of the acids. In this case, how do you get your readings? How readings are done? How to read your buret? Remember I told you there are two types of reading, how to read a thermometer and how to read a, um, a liquids, a liquid solution. Now reading a thermometer, as I told you the other time, we have that is convex in a thermometer, the line, the line that you read should be on the mercury level. The convex, the convex, um, um, uh, the miniscules, the miniscules should be below the line. The miniscules should be below the line for you to make the reading in a thermometer. But in case in the case where we are we are reading a buret, we are reading a buret with a solution. Now, what happened is that this is what we call a concave miniscule. The miniscule must sit on the line you read. The miniscule must sit on the line you read. So, for instance, here, this is a buret. This is a buret here. In order to read this buret here, you have to read from where, where the miniscule ends. Where the miniscule ends, that is where you read. The miniscule must sit on a line. And where it is sitting on that line, that is where you take your reading. For, in, for instance, in this case, it is 22.30. 22.30 cm cube. Let's move on how the titration is done. Now, after measuring the acid into the conical flask, we added an indicator using a pipette. And we added a, a dropping um, a pipette. Now what happens? We now titrated it with the standard sodium hydroxide solution. Now we have taken our initial buret reading. Let me say 50 cm cube. 
Now we need to read the amount, the, the, the volume of what, uh, the volume of the, we need to read the volume of the sodium hydroxide that has been used in the reaction to react with the acid. This is the final Bure reading where we stopped our reaction when we had our end point. You need to read this, uh, this uh, you need to read it very well as I've explained how to read the level of the volume in burets in, in a buret. So when you read this, this is how you present your results. In some cases, learners, you could be asked to construct a table and present the result. This is how you, you construct the table. You need to write, you need to construct a, uh, a result table like this one. You have the initial buret reading, the final buret reading, the titra, the raw tit titration, the accurate titration one, two, and three, depending the one you have been given. The, your, your recording must be in this order. So that at the end, our initial buret reading was 50 cm cube. The final buret reading that we had up here, let me say up here, was, was uh, 15 cm cube. And in that case, the volume of the sodium hydroxide, the volume of the sodium hydroxide that have been used was 35 cm cube. This is how you record it. Now, we want to make a review of the common laboratory equipment and their uses. This is very, very important because learners, you could be given a, 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 a alternative to practical the, examination, the examiner can describe a particular investigation and ask you to list the apparatus that are used for that measurement. So if you don't know the, if you don't know the different equipment that are used for different purposes, it will be difficult for you to answer such a question. So it is obligatory for learners to know more to know about the common laboratory equipment and their uses. We now go to them. The first one is a beaker. This is a beaker with a glass rod. The glass rod is used to ensure that the, the solid dissolves in the solvent. This is a dropping pipet. The dropping pipet is used to take, like, uh, to take little uh, liquid, say an, indic an indicator. Uh, this is a gas syringe, which we just discussed, used in the measurement of accurate measurement for gases. Now, this is a clamp and a buret. The clamp is used to hold the, the, the clamp and the buret stamp is used to hold the buret. We have a graduated cylinder, which is for quick measurement of volume. This is a petri dish. This is a talk that you can use in holding the any glass in holding any glassware like the beaker. We have we we have a tripod here. We have a tripod. A tripod is a, a tripod and uh, the gaze. We use them when we want to use when we want to heat any solution using a Bunsen burner. We place the gaze on the tripod. We place the gaze on the tripod and place the flask containing the solution for heating on it. The gas the Bunsen burner is there to generate energy that is required for the heating. We now, we have um, a, um, a test tube rack. This is a test tube rack. We can put, we can stand test tube there. We can stand test tube, open st um, uh, test tube. We can stand test tube with stoppers. We can even stand, fill um, 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 uh, funnels there. This is an evaporating dish. An evaporating dish is another equipment that is used to, uh, to heat a solution. Let me say a solution of um, um, uh, sodium, uh, um, uh, a solution containing water and a um, uh, solution of salt containing salt and water, a solution containing salt and water. And we want to crystallize. We want to crist um, uh, crystallize it to evaporate to evaporate the water so that we have our crystals of the salt, we use an evaporating dish. The crucible, the crucible is there. Wherever we have the crucible or we use our motor, any of them, the crucible or the motor, we can use then the pistol. We can use this to crush 
lumps or big um, uh, um, salts into powder before dissolving them. Now, it moves on now to these other ones. We see how the beaker here, as I said, we have the test tubes. I've explained to you. We have the test tube holder when we are heating it. We have the clear, um, uh, the clear triangle. The clear triangle is used to place on to place on a Bunsen burner before putting the clear on it. We have a dropping pipette used to take little volumes of liquid, let me say, indicators and put it into a conical flower when we are doing titration. We have a burette clamp. The burette clamp is here to hold uh, 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 burettes. We can also hold other glass well there. We have an evaporating dish, as I told you. This is to evaporate water in a solution of salt and water. You can evaporate the water and uh, the salt is left behind for our, cri for our crystals. So generally it is used for evaporating water or for the, for the process of crystallization. Then, um, yeah, then the funnel, we, we have not talked about the funnel. The funnel is also there for, for filtration purpose. It is used for the purpose of filtration. So, so learn us once more, this is very, very important for you to know the, the names of the different equipment that are used in the laboratory for investigation. So thank you for watching. Please like, like, share, and subscribe for more YouTube practical lessons. Thank you.